Hello students, I am Surja Shaju. Welcome to today's biology class. In the last class, we discussed about the role of microbes in biogas production. So, in this chapter, we have already discussed about the role of microbes in household products, the role of microbes in industrial products. We discussed about the role of microbes in sewage treatment. And now we started with the role of microbes in agriculture. In agriculture, the first part was in the formation of biogas or in the production of biogas. Now in today's class, we will discuss about how microbes can be used as biocontrol agents. Now this is a new term that you have never come across, biocontrol. But what's the meaning of biocontrol? Let's see what's the meaning of biocontrol. You all know that crop plants are attacked by certain disease causing microorganisms, diseases uh, uh, caused by certain pests or uh, certain insects. And normally what the farmers do in order to protect their crop plants, they use various pesticides and insecticides. Now, Biocontrol is a technique in which biological methods are used in order to control pests and disease causing organisms or in order to control plant diseases and pests. So, let's see how can we define biocontrol as. Biocontrol refers to the use of biological methods for controlling plant diseases and pests. Hope you got it. So, what is biocontrol? Controlling the pests and the plant diseases by using certain biological methods. Okay, very important from examination point of view. You may get a question. Define biocontrol. So, what is biocontrol? It refers to the use of biological methods for controlling plant diseases and pests. So, in this picture, you can see number of pests which attack uh, plants. You must have seen some of these caterpillars, certain kinds of insects, right? All these attack different kinds of crop plants. So, farmers find it difficult to control these plant diseases and pests. So, what they do? They normally use insecticides and pesticides. You must have seen spraying of insecticides and pesticides like this. Right? Nowadays, uh, drones are used to spray the insecticides and pesticides. Now, looking at these pictures, can you just uh, imagine what will be the side effect of using these pesticides? Just think about it. What happens when we use these insecticides and pesticides in this manner? Using a drone to spray the insecticides or using certain sprayers to spray the insecticides into crop plants. What will be the effect? Right, you know. Now, what are pesticides in fact or insecticides? Pesticides and insecticides are nothing but chemicals. Chemicals which are poisonous. Yes or no? Only if they are poisonous can they kill the insects or the pests which attack the plants. So, chemicals which are toxic to certain uh, other organisms like insects and pests will definitely be toxic to human beings and other animals. Isn't it? So, uh, the use of pesticides and insecticides are discouraged nowadays. What is the reason? What would be the reason for that? Just because of their side effects or ill effects. So, let, let us see. What are the ill effects? The first word is ill. I-L-L. -L, right? This is ill. Ill effects of using insecticides and pesticides. The first effect. These chemicals are toxic and extremely harmful to both animals and human beings. Hope uh, this point does not require any further explanation. But still, as I have told you, these chemicals are toxins. And when these toxins enter our human body or enter the body of other animals, it leads to various diseases. That is how it proves harmful. Now, uh, you must have heard or uh, we all do this when we buy vegetables and fruits in our houses. What we normally do? We wash them thoroughly. 
Why do we have to wash them? We know that it will be sprayed with certain insecticides or pesticides. So in order to remove that traces of insecticides and pesticides on these fruits or vegetables, we wash it thoroughly. Okay, so the, the these chemicals are highly toxic. That is the first and the foremost side effect of insecticide and pesticide. Now let us see the second ill effect of insecticide and pesticide. These insecticides and pesticides pollute our environment. They pollute the fruits, vegetables and croplands. You have seen in the uh, previous uh, picture, right, how they pollute, how do they pollute uh, the atmosphere. So in this picture you can see how do they pollute. See, when insecticides are sprayed, it spreads all around, all around that. And these particles remain in the atmosphere. It remains in the environment. And when people inhale these, what happens? These chemicals get inside their body and that may lead to various diseases. Okay, so that is uh, one of the, it pollutes the environment. Now, it pollutes during rain. Where, uh, where are these sprayed? These are sprayed, sprayed onto the leaves or the plants. So, when it is sprayed, what happens is, when there, along with rainwater, these chemicals just drip into the soil and pollute the soil. From there, when this water flows into water bodies, they go and pollute even the water bodies. So, that is how these the spraying of insecticides and pesticides completely pollute our environment. Not only that, it also pollutes the crop plants, it also pollutes the vegetables, it also pollutes the, uh, uh, what is that, crop plants, vegetables as well as fruits. Okay. So, the first is they are toxic, second one is they pollute the environment. The third one, they enter the food chain and causes diseases at various tropic levels. How do these insecticides and pesticides enter the food chain? We are only spraying on the, uh, uh, on the leaves or on the plants. Now, how does it enter the food chain? You know what is food chain, right? Food chain consists of number of trophic levels. The first tropic level is a producer, then comes the consumers and then comes the decomposers and so on. So, the insecticides and pesticides are sprayed onto the plants. So, that is on the producers. When cattle eat this, what happens? This insecticide or the pesticide which is sprayed onto the plants enter their body. When we human beings eat these crops, that is either the fruits or the vegetables or the uh, paddy or whatever uh, crop we get from these plants, when we human beings eat that, what happens? It enters our body. So, from the producer level, it enters the next tropic level. From there, it goes to the next tropic level. So, they enter, first enter the food chain and then cause certain diseases at various tropic levels. Tropic levels means, hope you know, the producers, the consumers, consumers again divided into primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers and so on. Okay, so this is how the insecticides and pesticides uh, enter the tropic levels and cause diseases. Hope it's clear. And the fourth ill effect of using insecticide and pesticide is some of these chemicals are non-biodegradable. What's the meaning of that? Cannot be degraded. They remain as it is in the soil or in the water bodies or in the environment or inside the body of plants and animals. And this may lead to biomagnification. Now, what is biomagnification? Biomagnification refers to the increase in concentration of the toxicants at successive trophic levels. Increase in concentration of toxicants. Toxicants means these chemicals which are present in the pesticides and uh, insecticides. As I have told you, first they enter the producer's body. Then when they enter the consumer's body, it will be doubled or tripled. And then from there it enters the next level. So this, le this increase in concentration of toxicants at successive trophic levels is called as biomagnification. We will study about biomagnification in a later chapter that is in environmental issues. You have one chapter by name, environmental issues. In that chapter, we will be studying about biomagnification in detail. Okay, so for the time being, you should know what are the ill effects of using insecticides and pesticides or why insecticides, use of insecticides and pesticides are discouraged. First and the foremost reason is they are toxic and are harmful. Second one is they pollute the environment. 
Third one is they enter the food chain and cause diseases at various trophic levels. And the fourth point is they cause biomagnification. So these are some of the ill effects of using insecticides and pesticides. And because of this, the farmers are now encouraged to do organic farming. Now, what is organic farming? Organic farming is nothing but using the natural fertilizers, natural pesticides, natural insecticides and to protect the crop plants. Okay, so that is organic fa farming. Now, uh, in this chapter, we have to study about the role of uh, organisms in controlling pests and insects. Okay, so the agents which are used to, to control this pest and plant diseases, they are called as biocontrol agents. So we have already seen what is the uh, definition for biocontrol. What is biocontrol? Biocontrol refers to the use of biological methods to control pests and plant diseases. Isn't it? So now what are biocontrol agents? Biocontrol agents are the agents or the organisms which are used to control pests and plant diseases. Now let us see what are the which are the biocontrol agents that are used to control various pests and diseases. Now the first one that is ladybird. Have you heard about ladybird? Right, there it is. A, it's not a bird, right? It's a small uh, insect. It's also called as beetle. Here you can see in this picture, this is a ladybug. So this beetle is used to get rid of aphids. Now these are small aphids. This is a rosebud. Okay, sometimes when a rosebud uh, is uh, formed uh, on the plant, you will find small insects like this surrounding that and eating away the bud. Have you observed that? Right. These are nothing but aphids. Okay. And this one, that is the ladybird, eats these aphids. So, if this ladybird is present in that, uh, on that rose plant or nearby that, it goes and eats away the aphids. So, that way we can control aphids by, if we use this ladybird. The same way, dragonflies. You must have seen these are the dragonflies. These are used to control mosquitoes. During, uh, when do you find these dragonflies? It's usually during a uh, rainy season that we find uh, this uh, dragonflies. And it is during this rainy season that we find mosquitoes, plenty of mosquitoes. So these dragonflies can be used to get rid of mosquitoes. Hope it's clear. So these are the two organisms which are used. One is ladybird. It is used to get rid of aphids. And dragonflies are used to get rid of mosquitoes. Hope it's clear. So these uh, we can see with our uh, naked eyes. That is uh, uh, this uh, ladybird as well as dragonflies. We can see with uh, they are not microorganisms, but they are certain organisms which can be used. Now here we will study about the role of a bacterium. The name of the bacterium is Bacillus thuringiensis. Once again, I'll repeat. A bit difficult. Bacillus thuringiensis. Thuringiensis. Now this. Uh, uh, Bacillus thuringiensis is a bacteria. Now, uh, what? Uh, how is it used? I can. I'll show you. This is a bacteria, which is a microorganism, which cannot be seen with our naked eyes. Now, this bacteria produces spores. Spores are asexual reproductive structures of these bacteria. Now, these spores are sprayed. They are mixed with water. The, sp the spores of the asexual reproductive structures of this Bacillus thuringiensis is now first collected, mixed with water and then sprayed onto vulnerable plants like brassica and fruit trees. Brassica is nothing but uh, uh, cabbage. Okay, so uh, here you can see. So on the cabbage uh, leaf, sometimes you will find caterpillars like this. Okay, these caterpillars can be uh, killed by using the spores of Bacillus thuringiensis. How does this uh, spores act on the uh, on this caterpillar? You must have seen sometimes uh, the caterpillars eating away the leaves, especially the tender leaves. Yes or no? Caterpillar of a butterfly. Okay. Now the spores of, as I've told you, uh, this Bacillus thuringiensis produces uh, asexual reproductive structures called as spores. The, the spores are collected, then mixed with water, and then sprayed onto the leaves of these plants, vulnerable plants. Uh, means plants which are uh, attacked by this caterpillar. Now, when it is uh, uh, sprayed onto the leaves, what happens is the caterpillar goes and starts eating away the leaves. Now, on the leaves, what is found? What is done? We have sprayed the spores. 
Now, along with this leaf, the spores also enter the gut or the elementary canal of the caterpillar or the larvae. Okay, hope it's clear. What is what did I say? The spores first enter the along with the leaves. The spores enter the elementary canal of the caterpillar or the larvae. When it enters, when it reaches inside the gut, the spores releases a toxin. This toxin kills the larvae. So, what happens is when we spray these, when we spray the spores of this bacillus thuringiensis onto the leaves of the plants, the larvae eats the leaf along with the leaf, the spores enter their gut. Once it reaches the gut, once the spores reaches the gut, what happens? The toxin will be released. And this toxin kills the larvae. The larvae is killed, what happens? The plant is saved or the leaf is saved. Okay, so this is how Bacillus thuringiensis is used to destroy the caterpillar of uh, butterfly or eater. So, here you can see the spores of the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis are mixed with water and then sprayed onto vulnerable plants like brassica and fruit trees where these, these means what these spores are eaten by the insect larvae. Okay. Insect larvae eats that leaves which is sprayed with the spores and then what happens in the gut of the larvae the toxin is released and the larvae gets killed. Now the gene which is responsible for the production of this toxin in Bacillus thuringiensis is now discovered. Now we know the gene which is responsible for the production of this toxin and the name of the gene is CRY, C-R-Y, CRY gene. You will study this uh, in a chapter by name Biotechnology, Applications of Biotechnology. So there you will be studying it in detail. So for the time being you should know only this much that is the Bacillus thuringiensis is used in controlling the pests or insects which destroy uh, the crops or crop plants okay especially brassica and other vulnerable plants fruit trees okay so this is how the action is the gene which is responsible for that is now um, found out and uh, it is used to produce certain now what is done is using uh, this biotechnology these genes are uh, inserted into the plants like uh, tomatoes brinjal cotton and so on Okay, so these genes are uh, inserted inside these plants and then uh, such plants where these genes are uh, um, inserted, such plants are called as BT plants. BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. Uh, so nowadays we have uh, BT cotton, BT uh, brinjal, BT tomato and so on. So these uh, in all these plants you will find the gene. Now what is the, uh, uh, what is the um, use of uh, having this gene inside the plant itself? When this gene is inside the plant, uh, the caterpillar, the moment we don't have to spray the spores, the genes are already present. So when the caterpillar starts eating, immediately the caterpillar dies because the gene which produces the toxin is already present in the plant. Hope it's clear. So you will be studying about this in detail in uh, that chapter biotechnology. Okay. So that is the role of one bacterium uh, which act as a biocontrol agent. Now let's see. A species of fungi which is free living uh, called as trichoderma. Do you remember trichoderma? We have studied about trichoderma earlier. In which uh, part we have studied about trichoderma? In uh, this uh, trichoderma, um, uh, trichoderma species, uh, which is used uh, to produce with cyclosporin A. Trichoderma species is used for the production of cyclosporin A, which is uh, uh, what is that? Uh, which is a, uh, a bioactive molecule. Okay, so now here, trichoderma species are free living fungi found in the root ecosystem. So, this is a root ecosystem. Okay, so here you will find uh, this uh, fungus free, living freely. Here you can see the uh, white, uh, um, white colored uh, root like structures, hyphae or the mycelium. You can see that. So, this is a fungus which is found in the root ecosystem. Now, this trichoderma can act as an effective biocontrol agent against several plant pathogens. There are number of disease causing organisms found in the root ecosystem of certain plants. 
So these pathogens can be killed by this fungus that is Trichoderma species. So Trichoderma species is uh, another biocontrol agent uh, which is used to destroy the plant pathogens found in the root ecosystem. Hope it's clear. So here also you can see. So these are the trichoderma, this white colored uh, structures which are found attached to the roots. Now, another uh, another uh, biocontrol agent which can be used is a virus. This virus name of the virus is baculovirus. It's a common name. Baculovirus of a particular genus by name nucleopolyhedrovirus. What is this? Nucleopolyhedrovirus. So, baculoviruses of the genus nucleopolyhedrovirus is used as an effective species specific biocontrol agent against certain insects and other arthropods. Last year we have studied about arthropods, right? Arthropods, uh, they form the largest phylum and the uh, number of arthropods uh, uh, attack the crop plants and uh, crop plants. So, these arthropods, the baculoviruses of the gene, especially of the genus nucleopolyhedrovirus, these nucleopolyhedrovirus cause diseases in plants. Okay, cause diseases in, sorry, not plants, in these insects and uh, certain arthropods. They are pathogens which cause diseases in insects and arthropods. So, if we use these baculoviruses or the nucleopolyhedroviruses, what will happen? These insects will die. Why? Because they cause diseases in these insects and arthropods. And these are the insects and arthropods which destroy our crop plants. So, when we use these baculoviruses against the insects and arthropods, it kills the insects and arthropods which destroy the crop plants. That is how it acts as a biocontrol agent. Okay. So, baculoviruses of the genus polynucleo Nucleopolyhedrovirus. Try to remember this name. Nucleopolyhedrovirus is used as an effective species specific. Means one, one particular uh, virus, that is nucleopolyhedrovirus, causes a particular disease in a particular insect. That's why you know species specific. Uh, species specific biocontrol agent against certain insects and other arthropods. Hope it's clear? Right. Now, baculoviruses are pathogens. As I've told you, they are pathogens that attack certain insects and arthropods. They do not have any negative impact on plants, mammals, birds or other non-target insects. So, that is the most important benefit of using baculoviruses. Baculoviruses are species specific. They will attack only certain kind of insects or arthropods. Hence, it is not harmful for the plants on which it is used. It is not harmful for mammals. It is not harmful for birds or it is not harmful for any other insects. Okay, so it will affect only those specific group of insects which and causes a disease thereby destroying that insect. Hope it's clear. So, that is the role of baculoviruses. So, today we have discussed about the role of various organisms in controlling plant diseases and pests. So, the first point what you have to remember is ladybird and dragonflies. Ladybird is used to get rid of aphids. Dragonflies are used to get rid of mosquitoes. Second, uh, we have seen the role of Bacillus thuringiensis. That is a bacterium. How is it used? The spores are mixed with water and then sprayed onto the leaves of vulnerable plants. The insect larvae eat these leaves. Then what happens? This uh, spores enter their gut. And it releases a toxin and kills the larvae. That is how it acts. Okay, Bacillus thuringiensis. After that, we have discussed about a fungus, which is that trichoderma. Trichoderma species is found in the root ecosystem. And this helps to control number of root pathogens. Fine. Then the third one, baculoviruses. So, one bacterium we study, one fungus we study, and now one a group of viruses by name baculoviruses. Baculoviruses of a particular genus, that is nucleopolyhedrovirus, is used in uh, controlling the certain insects and some arthropods which attack the crop plants. How do they uh, attack? They are they cause certain diseases in these insects and arthropods. That is how they kill that insects and arthropods, thereby protecting the crop plants. Hope it's clear. So that is all about biocontrol agents.
hope uh, today's uh, class is uh, clear to you what biocontrol agents very important from examination point of view okay thank you